Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wiki Whisperer, Articles Aloud. My name is Adrian Kuro, and I will be your host. Now, this is a show where I select a Wikipedia article at random, or by request, and I read it in its entirety. Now, to keep with the spirit of authenticity, as if I was truly reading to you, I have decided to do this show in one take. No cuts, no edits. That means all stutters, misspoken words, and errors will be kept in, which I apologize for in advance. Today's article is about Ernest Warwick. Let's begin. Ernest Warwick, 1918-2009, was a British author, prisoner of war, and survivor of the Burma to Siam Death Railway. Biography Ernest Edward Lawrence Warwick was born in Brighton in 1918, towards the end of the First World War. He had a tough upbringing through the slump and poverty of the 30s. The eldest of eight children, with four brothers and three sisters, he was forced to leave school at 13 years of age after his father had been killed the day before in a road accident. At the outbreak of World War II in 1939, he was called up and, after eight weeks basic training in the Essex Regiment, he was posted to the 4th Battalion of the Suffolk Regiment, HQ Company, intelligence section for the duration of World War II. This formed part of the 18th Infantry Combat Division of the British Army. Serving as a private soldier, fighting on the streets in the brief and bloody 17-day battle for Singapore, which ended in the ignominious surrender of the island, the, quote, fortress that never was, end quote. He was wounded in action and taken prisoner of war on the 15th of February, 1942. He spent three years and eight months as a Japanese prisoner of war. The majority of this on the infamous, quote, railway of death, in Thailand. Saved from virtually certain death by the timely dropping of the atom bomb on Japan, which led to the almost immediate unconditional surrender of the Japanese. In August 1945, he was flown to a hospital in Rangoon, Burma, weighing just over six stone, 84 pounds. He was awarded the 1939 to 1945 star the Pacific Star for the 17-day Bloody Battle of Singapore, and the 1939-1945 War Medal. Throughout the post-war years, he had a variety of jobs in industry, culminating in his position as Deputy Head Porter at the General Hospital in Rockford for eight years until his retirement in 1983. He lived with his family in the village of Ashingdon, in Essex. Ernest was haunted by his years in captivity all his life and was confined to a wheelchair as a direct result of brutal torture and ill treatment at the hands of the Japanese in the grim jungle death camps alongside the River Kwai. Quote, Mr. Ernest Warwick suffered badly at the hands of the Japanese and came out of a Japanese camp as my right on friend as described, broken in health. But the remarkable thing about such men is that they were not broken in spirit and managed to survive because their spirit was not broken. End quote. In no way did he glorify war, but felt that as a proud nation we should always remember and honor our dead, who gave so much that we might live. Between 1985 and 1987, Ernest wrote, and then in 1987 published, his first and only book, Tamajau 241, a POW camp on the River Kwai. It is based solidly on his own experiences in captivity. His story was written as a tribute to his dead comrades and to expose to the world the appalling inhumanity of the Japanese and Koreans during World War II. Incident at the Docks Daily work parties were sent from Changi to the city of Singapore in overcrowded lorries to 
work on the docks loading and unloading ships. At the docks, Ernest witnessed an armed guard horse an old Chinese lady who had been giving cakes to Ernest and some of the other prisoners to hold a metal bar above her head while he beat her about the face with his belt until she bled. Ernest intervened by striking the guard, which subsequently resulted in him being punished by being roped to a tree for five days and five nights without food or water. At sunrise every day, the Japanese guards would pray to Emperor Hirohito and then beat Ernest into unconsciousness. They threatened to behead Ernest by a sword that changed their minds and instead sentenced him to 28 days in a metal tomb at the Japanese Punishment Center. Portrait by Ashley George Old The Portrait of Warwick by Ashley George Old here featured in an article in the Echo, Essex, on Monday the 12th, August 1985, that recounted how Warwick and Old were reunited after 41 years. In the Wikipedia article, there's a portrait of Ernest Warwick. Later Life In his later life, as an author and campaigner for ex-POWs and their plight for compensation from the Japanese government, Ernest was interviewed on the subject by national press and for local and national TV news. He appeared in Channel 4's Scars of War documentary, recounting his experiences in captivity. Also, he was flown to New York to give evidence in federal court on his experiences on the River Kwai in a case against Sony. Here is a brief summary of Ernest Warwick. Born the 12th of April, 1918, in Brighton, England. Died January 14th, 2009, at the age of 90. Occupation, author. Nationality, British. Genre, war. Subject, captivity on the Burma Railway of Death. Notable work. Amajau 241, a POW camp on the River Kwai. Military career, service slash branch, British Army. Years of service, 1939 to 1945. Rank, private. Unit, Suffolk Regiment. Battles slash wars, Second World War, Battle of Singapore. Website tamajao241.org.uk. That is spelled T A M A J A O 241.org.uk. And with that, this concludes this week's reading for Wiki Whisperer Articles Aloud. I hope you enjoyed this brief article about Ernest Warwick. If you enjoyed listening, which I hope you did, Please give this podcast a five-star rating wherever you may be listening, as it really does help me out. If you have any words of advice on how I can improve my recordings and or format, if you would like to request an article for me to read in next week's recording, or if you would simply like to give me some words of encouragement, please feel free to do so by emailing me at wikiwhisper at gmail.com. That is spelled W-I-K-I-W-H-I-S-P-E-R-E-R at gmail.com. All information used on this podcast can be found on wikipedia.com and is available for fair use under the Creative Commons license. Once again, thank you all so very much for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.